introducing the T-36 Pursuit for the Air Corps of the United States Army. Typical among the manufacturing sources of Air Corps procurement is the factory of the Curtis Aeroplane Division at Buffalo, New York. Here in modern buildings, over 4,000 skilled workmen utilize 700,000 square feet of floor area to exclusively manufacture military aircraft. Factories such as this form the basis for industry, which may be turned to increase production of modern aircraft should the need arise. This is a section of the engineering department. A personnel with thorough knowledge of requirements and specifications is necessary to design Air Corps flight equipment. After the new double shop, here an accurate scale model varying in size from one-eighth to one-quarter, as large as the completed plane, is built by men long trained in the work. Not only must the model be accurate in every detail, but it must be constructed sufficiently solid to withstand the strains imposed upon it in a high-speed wind tunnel. Here, engineers of the aerodynamics section test it for performance characteristics with special recording instruments. Once the model tests have proved satisfactory, actual construction is begun. The first step toward building the plane begins in the mold law, which is similar to that used in lofting ships of the sea. The contours of various parts are then taken from the drawing and transferred to the loft floor. When the complete plane has been laid out in this manner, templates are made for each piece which will later be fabricated in the factory. Eighty percent of the metal used in the construction of military aircraft today consists of aluminum sheets or a combination of aluminum and its alloys. The other twenty percent may be allotted to steel forgings, castings, and other machined units. Extensive heavy machinery is necessary to fabricate this sheet into completed parts. Cutters and stamping machines, brakes and presses, are the equipment's backbone of the present-day aircraft production. Some of this machinery has been designed specifically for this fast-growing industry. Other has been adapted from various production types. All requires competent operators to assure a maximum efficiency of operation. Even such a seemingly unimportant item as an exhaust stack requires special equipment. These drop hammers, using zinc dyes, form sections of exhaust stack from stainless steel sheets. When the sections have been welded together, they are assembled in a jig to form a completed collector ring. Hydraulic presses, with pressures as high as 2,500 tons, are employed to draw the aluminum alloy into the many forms required. Each piece to be produced presents its own problem in the matter of dyes for use on the press equipment. A tool design department is a necessary adjunct in this specialized production industry where parts are counted in hundreds rather than hundreds of thousands and unit costs must be held to a minimum. Heat treating is necessary to obtain maximum strength from aluminum. This metal, when used for aircraft parts, is worked in its soft condition. To reach the required strength, a carefully controlled heat treating process is necessary. Many and varied machine operations are needed to produce a finished part from a single forged billet. Here, in its original form, this oleo strut forging weighs approximately 90 pounds. When completely machined, the weight will be but 15. The early operations include turning on a lathe to correct outside dimensions, reaming to remove the core of the metal in the section where the piston will operate, drilling holes for connection to the landing gear proper, honing to attain the internal finish which is so necessary in parts that must hold liquid under pressure. The interior of the tube must be as smooth as glass when this operation is completed. When all the oleo parts have been assembled, they are tested on a machine which gives them the approximate usage they will receive under service conditions. On jigs, designed especially for the purpose, the axle which will carry the wheel is fitted to the completed oleo struts and the entire assembly installed on the aircraft wing and tested for satisfactory operation. Hundreds of forgings in varied shapes add to the strength of modern pursuit aircraft. Each of these must be worked from the rough form in which it is received to a completely finished part. During this process, much waste material is removed to meet the standards of weight necessary. 
To accomplish this, many exacting machine operations are needed, requiring highly skilled labor and expensive machinery. In order that the greatest efficiency may be achieved, it must be possible to run large numbers of similar parts. Steel parts are also dependent upon heat for their maximum strength. In most cases, an oil quench is used. Rings for engine mounting are formed in this unusual manner from a steel tube which has been brought to white heat. A simple welding process completes the manufacture of this unit. The lifeblood of an aircraft is contained in its fuel tank. These are constructed in such a manner as to withstand all vibration and any unusual shock which might occur during the plane's operation. The tank's skin is riveted to an aluminum framework after which each rivet must be welded so that it becomes a physical part of the tank covering. As a test against possible leaks, the tank is then immersed in water and air under pressure is forced into it. In fabrication, both automatic riveting and spot welding are employed. Here again, extensive special equipment must be procured to meet the specifications required in military aircraft. Spot welds must be uniform and exterior rivets completely flush with the metal which they are holding. Less complicated, but no less efficient, than a jig used in the machining process is this frame for mounting extrusions and transparent material used in the construction of sliding cabin frames. In the assembly of the windshield, curved glass sections are fitted into a prefabricated frame. Despite the fact that aircraft manufacture has become highly mechanized, skilled craftsmen still play an important part in fabricating such sections as wing fillets, fairings, and engine cowling. Hand work is necessary to attain the degree of perfection required. On a series of jigs, the fabricated formers and preformed skins are brought together to emerge a completed unit ready for assembly. Permanent fixtures, such as the one seen here, are used wherever possible to assure interchangeability of the larger unit. Stabilizers built up on this jig may be attached to any aeroplane in a specific order without alteration or fitting. Although the use of fabric covered structures is cut to a minimum, the air controls on the P-36 are covered in this manner. Strong, light framework allows the application of cloth and reduces weight, while still maintaining sufficient sturdiness. This is the only production department where work by women is found preferable to that of men. Of premier importance in constructing these ships of the air, are the wings upon which they must ride. The P-36 wing is of multicellular construction built up from a box spar leading edge with a series of interlocking spars and webs. After the leading edge has been formed, the first spar is attached and the entire unit fitted into a framework where step by step sections are added until the wing has been completed. Each unit is carefully inspected before it continues on the production line for further fabrication. Strips of the metal skin covering pre-drilled through templates, are attached to the lateral stringers which assist rigidity. Each section of the wing covering is assembled in this manner and is then fitted to the box sections which have already been placed in the jig. Landing flaps are installed upon a completed wing in this manner, the interchangeability feature again being stressed as any flap may be withdrawn from a storage rack and perfect fit assured. This general view of the panel assembly department gives an excellent idea of the scope of modern production work. Many units under construction at the same time allow a smooth flow of finished wings into the final assembly department. Here in final assembly, the wings proceed along the production line as landing gears light controls, and other major items are installed. When these installations have been completed, wing and fuselage meet and are assembled for the first time. As in the case of all major structures in the P-36, the formers, stringers, and skin which are used to complete a fuselage have been fabricated and drilled before their arrival in the fuselage department. Each piece, specifically numbered, is fitted into the jig and the skin is carefully fastened in place before the riveting operation is begun. 
The fuselage is built in two sections, upper and lower. On many sets of jigs, the same operations are being done simultaneously, allowing increased speed of production. As each half is completed, it is removed from the jig upon which it was built and fitted into a special aligning device. Upper and lower sections are then brought carefully together and with a final riveting job, they become a completed fuselage. Again, this complete unit receives the ever watchful inspection. After acceptance, the fuselage is transferred to the final assembly department where equipment is installed. The major unit of equipment is, of course, the engine. This is brought to the fuselage by an overhead crane and has already been installed on the engine mount. The attachment is readily accomplished. On an assembly line similar to that of an automobile plant, the Air Corps' fighting craft begin to take on a finished appearance. All the various parts and assemblies which have been manufactured throughout the factory converge in the assembly department and are installed in the proper place in the fuselage or wing. Gas and oil tanks are fitted into brackets built in for the purpose. Windshields and cabins complete the arrangements for the pilot's protection and comfort. Tail surfaces, already a completed unit, are set into place and connected and finally, the propeller is placed on the engine crankshaft. At this point in production, the many thousands of small parts that make up a military plane have become two major units. Fuselage and wing. Then follows the final cleanup. The interior paint is carefully applied. External parts are polished to a shining luster, and the many necessary operations and service instructions are put inside and out. Another careful inspection, and the plane is mounted on a specially designed trailer for transportation to the airport. Here, the last assembly job is completed. The wing fillets and fairings are fitted into place. The landing gear is checked for final operation, and the plane rolled outside for engine ground test. After a period of check time on the engine is run, arrangements are made for the plane's final proving, that of flight. Flown first by a pilot and the manufacturer's employ, and thereafter by an Air Corps officer for acceptance, the plane is put through a carefully planned series of maneuvers. These views of the P-36 clearly show the unusual operation of landing gear. As it moves from its position, snugly nested and streamlined in the wing, to a fully extended position, ready for contact with the ground. Even the tailwheel is fully enclosed in the fuselage when the gear is retracted. It takes only a matter of seconds to prepare this ship for the anticipated landing. Today, the P-36 is in operation with the pursuit groups of the Air Corps. It is a great improvement in speed, maneuverability, and stamina over the equipment which it replaced. Yet today, on the horizon, the faster, sleeker P-40 appears to supplement the equipment now serving this vital arm of aerial defense. Powered by an Allison inline engine well exceeding 1,000 horsepower, the P-40 is among the many new designs which keep America a step ahead in aerial preparedness.